Did you know that there are more ways of interacting with and using Linode other than the main dashboard? It's true. In fact, there are actually quite a few ways to use Linode. The first one is the main dashboard UI that can be found at cloud.linode.com. You are probably familiar with this one. The second one is the Linode API, which is very robust and built with future proofing in mind. Make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel because we're going to be uploading new content soon about the Linode API. The third way to interact with and use Linode is what we are going to be covering in this video. And that is the Linode command line interface or just the Linode CLI for short. The Linode CLI is a practical tool that integrates with the Linode API to allow you to do your work much more efficiently. And in this video, we are going to take a deep dive into the Linode CLI. And the first thing you're going to need to do is to create your own Linode account. If you haven't yet already, just go to Linode.com or even better, there is a link in this description that will give you Linode credit. So the first thing we need to do on the terminal is install pip. Pip is a Python package manager, and it's what allows us to install and uninstall Python packages. And the Linode CLI is also a Python package. I already have pip on my machine, but I'm going to show you how to install pip anyway, in case you don't have it on your machine. So the command we run is sudo apt install python3 pip. This command might take a little bit longer if it's your first time installing it, but for me, it was a bit faster because I already have it. So now we have the Python package manager and we're ready to install our Python package of the day, which is the Linode-CLI. The command for that is pip3 install the Python package name, which is Linode-CLI. And it is collecting it and it says successfully installed. And to double make sure that we do have the package installed, we're going to run the command which Linode dash CLI. And it will show us the directory to which our Linode CLI sits. And we now know that our machine recognizes the command Linode dash CLI. Now moving on to the next phase, which is to configure the CLI. This is our way of communicating from the terminal to the Linode manager that we are the same person that we've logged into in the browser. And to start that, we are gonna run our first Linode command, which is linode-cli configure. And then it's gonna ask us for a personal access token. This is a token that essentially serves as a password to allow us to log in to the terminal. And it's also given us a link. If you look over here to get one, please visit. It's given us a link where we can actually get the token. You can click on this link and follow it and it will take you right to where you need to be. But I'm gonna show you how to get there from your UI dashboard. You first click on your profile icon and then click on my profile. Then I'm gonna click on API tokens over here and I'm gonna add a personal access token. Then to label it, I'm gonna call it my Ubuntu. I prefer to label my tokens after my machine. And then I'm gonna leave it for six months. That's reasonable time. So every six months I'll have to renew it. And then I'm gonna choose the Linode products that I frequently work on that I would actually like my personal access token to give me access to. What I often like to do is I like to give my account read-only access, and that's because I don't want to change my details, my account details on the terminal. And then I also like to do stuff with my domains that I'm going to give read or write because I may be creating or updating domains from the terminal. And for events, I like read-only access because I don't change events that much. And then for images, I'm going to give read or write, and then I'm going to just skim through the ones I don't need. For the notes, I do need read or writes, object storage, and the same for volume. It's always a good idea to not click on the products that you don't typically use. That is because if someone has access to your API, you want to give them only access to the stuff that you use. That way you can see if someone's messing around with the products that you use. And then I'm gonna create the token and there it is there is the magic token this token is very important and it's 
a security measure and you should probably store it on your security manager like LastPass and that's a good idea and also you will only ever see this to access token once so the moment we click on OK we're not gonna see that access token again so now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna paste it and enter then you're gonna see configuring sunshine in my code which is my username then it's gonna ask me to choose a region. So the reason I want, I'm gonna go with the first option, which is AP West. And then I'm gonna go with the first option again. You can just click on enter and it will give you the default values. But the option I like to have control over is the image to deploy my new nodes. And then for that, I'm going to actually choose Ubuntu 18. You can choose any other preference of Ubuntu versions that you like. I'm gonna choose 24 enter and now it's actually told me that it's written a config file and it's stored it in this location and what i want to do now is i want to check this config file and see what's going on then i'm gonna just cat which is the command to print out what's in a file then i'm gonna paste this url and then i can actually now see my config file it's got my default user there and it's got my region and all this information so if you want to change your configuration information this is a good place so this is a good file it stores all your passwords and stuff here's a good tip if there is a Linode command that you want to run but you're not entirely sure how a good place to start is Linode dash CLI space the name of that and then dash dash help so let's say for example I want to look at my account then I can just say Linode-CLI account-help. And this will give me a list of all the things that I can do on my account. So you can see over here, I can update, cancel, invoice, settings update. And what I want to do is just view my account. Then I'm going to type Linode-CLI account view. And this will allow you to just view your account. And you see, you don't have to memorize them because you can just type dash dash help and then look at what you need to do. And there is my account. And I can also look at my settings. I'm gonna do the same thing again, this time for my settings. And there we go, I've got my settings and you can see I've got backups not enabled. It's not a managed account, all that info about my account. And now the next thing I want to look at is events. So let's say we can now look at the events that have happened on my Linode. Now I can type Linode-CLI events and as good practice, just type help. That way you don't always have to remember the commands off by heart. And then I can actually list all the events, mark as read, view the events or mark as seen. Okay, cool. So now I'm, I know what to do. I can just type that command again and now I'm gonna list and this will list all my events oh my gosh each event has an ID and this is all the stuff that I have done created a volume at some point I'm gonna click on this event ID I'm gonna just maybe look at a bit more info about that I see there's a command I can see here about viewing this event then I'm gonna type Linode-CLI events event then I'm gonna paste that ID for that event okay enter no action event for command events huh oh I can view the event haha -ha. let's view the event There we go. Now I can see more information about that event. I can also mark it as red. Ooh, Linode-CLI events mark red. Is it mark red or mark as red? Mark red. Aha, and then I'm going to paste the event ID. Okay, so we've now looked at accounts and events. Now let's look at some other cool stuff. Like let's look at your nodes. Ooh, so now I'm ready to look at um, what I can do with my Linodes. Okay, so now I'm gonna go Linode-CLI, Linodes. I know I can list Linodes. 
this will just give me a list of my Linodes. Cool, now I can actually also see that I've got the ID, the label, the region, and all this information about my Linodes. What happens if I wanna see all the fields? Cause this is quite a specific list, right? So let's say I wanna make sure that I can dash dash all, and this will give me a list of all my Linodes. There we go, not, yes, so now, sorry about that, this will give me a list of all the fields for my Linodes. So I can see the label, the region, the image, the type, all that info, which is far more than just the default list actually gave me. But what if I don't wanna see all the lists, but I wanna see some fields that aren't included in the, de in the default list. For that, we can actually run Linode-CLI, Linodes, list then I can dash dash format and then I'm gonna list all the actual fields that I want to list so the dash dash command allows me to choose a customized list of fields um, so let's say I want to be able to see the ID and I don't want to see the label or the region all the stuff that's included in the default I want to see stuff that's customized. I can see the tags, the status, the created, and yeah, those are the fields that I want to see. Then I can enter. And now you see that I've actually managed, oh, okay, cool, it's tags and not tag, but I've managed to customize this list. And that is an introduction to the Linode CLI. You went through installing the CLI, configuring it, and then I showed you how to use, look at your account details and your account events. And also we took a look at a couple of products on the, like how to use Linodes and how we would interact with these products on the Linode CLI. Always remember that if you ever get lost and you don't know which command to run, check out the Linode documentation on the Linode CLI. You can actually also search the Nano CLI by a product. So uh, using volumes on the CLI, using object storage on the CLI. So check out all that amazing documentation that will help you get started on the Nano CLI. And I hope that you found this video useful. And if you did, please remember to hit the like button. And as always, make sure that you are subscribed. My name is Suwakudu Matapeng. I am a developer advocate for Linode, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.